Hello and welcome, my name is Meeples, she, they, and this is Literally Graphic. And today we are going to be looking at the graphic novel Prince of Cats by Ron Wimberly. This volume was published by Vertigo in 2012. Content notes for shirtlessness across genders, sex, nudity, urinating on people, and blood splattering dramatic violence. Ron Wimberly is a cartoonist and illustrator. Wimberly was born and grew up around Washington DC and attended the Pratt Institute in Brooklyn. Other work by him is Black History in its own words, a graphic adaption of Something Wicked This Way Comes, Sentences by Carrie Percy, and Pandemic Paper Doll, among other things. I initially tried to read this digitally almost exactly one year ago, right after all the libraries closed due to COVID, with very little success. It was really nice to revisit it in a physical copy now, as it improved the reading experience rather dramatically. And for this addition to my Black Creators TBR, I wanted to highlight Bria of the channel B Biblio Bria. I started following her at the start of the year, but while she is generally a booktuber, she does have a v nice variety of videos that talk about researching, learning Spanish, and coffee. She also runs the website The Black Sportswoman. Circling back to the story at hand, The Prince of Cats, let's look at the official synopsis. Quote, a hip-hop retelling of William Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet that focuses on Tybalt, directly decisively referred to as the Prince of Cats, and his Capulet crew as they do battle nightly with the hated Montagues. Set in a Blade Runner-esque version of Brooklyn, Prince of Cats is a mix of urban melodrama, samurai action, and classic Shakespearean theater, all written in iambic pentameter." End quote. As far as the wordiness goes, obviously the dialogue and style are a big part of the book, very distinctive. I'm not a Shakespearean expert, but it felt very Shakespearean while still fitting in with the premise and plot. The art style was uh, probably my favorite part as it was fairly readable but with a distinct style. I also have a very soft spot for more geometric styles. The color palette was also delightfully distinct. I was not surprised to see he had done some work on Charles Soule's run on She-Hulk, which was a favorite of mine. The page layout and framing was also highly dynamic and really contributed to the action, which unlike most of the books I've been reading of late, seem to be the focus of the book. Digging into the representation in this book, blackness was one of the focuses of this Romeo and Juliet adaption, and there was a lot of skin tone diversity. Wimberly has also done a comic for The Nib about the issue of colorism in comics, which is a must read. Gender and sexuality representation was a little bit more, quote, traditional than I am generally used to at this point. I'm certainly used to books appearing to still only have fairly binary representation, but the seeming imbalance between female and male nudity, which with much more of the former and barely any of the latter, really does rub me the wrong way. <laughs> Class didn't really feel like it was something examined, and ability versus disability seemed like it mostly broke down to fighting fit versus dead. I ended up rating this book 3 out of 5 stars because it was so pretty and is very professionally done. Would recommend to anyone who thinks it looks good. Action is generally not the thing that really pulls me in. Bye all, keep reading, and resist white supremacy. And as always, Literally Graphic is created on land that should be given back to the traditional land holders which in this case is, to my knowledge, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation.